And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Ryan Metzler. Hey everybody, Ryan Metzler here, and today we're going to be taking a look at one of the newer games on the market. As a matter of fact, uh, this is being taped just before Gen Con, so this isn't even on the market yet. We're going to be taking a look at Quarriers. And it's kind of a uh, deck building, or actually dice building game, where you'll be buying dice, putting them into a bag, shuffling them up, and attempting to use these dice to the best of your ability in order to uh, attack your opponent and to score points. So with that said, why don't we take a look at what's inside this nice little tin box and how the game plays. Well, the first thing I really wanted to mention was how great this box is. I mean, take a look at it. It's shaped like a die. Uh, it's got the nice uh, indicators that are going to be on the actual dice in the corners. Uh, it's really very well made. It's, it's kind of a tin. Um, and around the outside, you have some nice artwork with interesting quotes. You know, uh, most of them don't really have anything to do with gameplay, but, but it's interesting and all around well produced. And let's open this. So. When we open the box, we have several different things. First, you're going to see there's this score track. Uh, and I have a little bit of trouble with this score track because it does something that I don't really like. It goes all the way across and then reverses direction. So you kind of have to go down in a zigzag for scoring. Uh, but not too big of a deal. Uh, and if you look at it a little closer, you can see that there's different uh, points needed to win for, for four players, three players, two. Uh, and so basically the more or less, uh, the more players you have, the fewer points you're going to need to win. And that'll be all kept track on this. Now we have the rule book, and then we have four different colored bags. Now these are kind of a uh, velvety type of feel bag. Um, pretty standard, you know, these will hold your dice as you get them, you'll be putting them in the box, or as you, as you buy them. Uh, so these will hold your dice as you, as you acquire them. Uh, you'll be shaking it up and pulling dice out of this in order to see what you'll be doing for the turn. Additionally, you're going to get a bunch of cards. You can see that there's a nice insert here to hold all of this stuff. And you're going to see several different types of cards. You have basic cards, uh, you have creature cards, and you're going to have spell cards. And on the other side of these you'll see uh, there's nice artwork and there's indicators about uh, how this works. So you'll see here, for example, this card uh, uses this green die. And actually at the bottom of each card it will show you what the six different sides of the dice are. So in this case you're going to have one dice that has what the quiddity, this is kind of your mana or your uh, your um, your money for the game. Uh, so one side will provide you with one, uh, one may provide you with two, actually two sides provide you with two, and then three sides have this symbol on them. And if you roll this symbol, you're going to get the ability to gain two quiddity, which is two money, but also you may re-roll any other two dice. And so each die is going to do different things. You have the life charm here, which when you cast it will allow you to take all your destroyed creatures and put them back in your active pool, which is dice that you've already rolled. Uh, you know, victory in incantation, which uh, lets you cast the spell to gain three glory, which is victory points, and so forth and so on. You have spells, uh, you'll have different creatures. Uh, so you have the Primordial Ooze here, uh, and his power is equal to uh, the number of creatures in already areas. So, interesting thing about creatures, you have the levels of the creature in the top left hand corner, so all of the slimes are level 2, or all of these Primordial Oozes are level 2. Uh, and then in the top right and bottom right hand corners, you're going to have the attack and defense strength of a creature. And so you'll see here, this one, uh, as there's more creatures in play, he's going to get stronger. And so this is interesting. But it's also interesting to note that since you randomize these at the beginning, you could have a different creature that has the same dice used, but has a different ability. So in this case, uh, his power and toughness are equal to the, the number of basic quiddity dice in your used pile. So it's going to be the white dice that I'll show you here in a moment. Uh, if you don't have any in play, he gets destroyed. And even furthermore, there's going to be uh, more of these. So you have yet another one. Uh, you have the strong primordial ooze whose power and toughness uh, copy somebody else's creature that's in play. Uh, so each die is going to have several different possibilities as what you can do with it. Now, in the game you're going to start with basic dice and these are going to be basic quiddity and these will provide you with money. You can see one on most of the sides, one side might provide you with two money. Uh, the other basic dice you'll start with are assistance and these are going to allow you to reroll other dice or they may provide you with quiddity or they can be a low level creature. And so you can see here, uh, this is the first creature you'll have in your, in your game, and it's going to be uh, a level 1 creature, meaning that it costs 1 quiddity to play, but it's also going to have an attack of 1 and a defensive 1, or sorry, 2, a defensive 2. 
So as you roll these, you'll see that not every die will always be what you want it to be. You may get money when you want a creature. You may get re-rolls, which will help you. Uh, matter of fact, you can re-roll that die and another die. Or you may get creatures, which might be what you're looking for. You're never guaranteed to get exactly what you want. The third basic die that's in every game is going to be the portal. And this one's uh, vastly underrated. Uh, so you can see costs of cards are in the top left-hand corner. I failed to mention that. But essentially, these dice are going to let you draw and roll more dice when you get this little symbol here. Uh, and if you get a real close look, you can see uh, that you may be able to draw and roll one more die or two more dice, depending on which side you get, or you may just get quiddity. So again, you may not get what you want. So each game you're going to draw three of these spells and you'll get the corresponding dice I'll show you in a moment. And you're going to draw seven creatures. Uh, making sure that you don't have any duplicates because obviously you can't use uh, the same die for two different creatures. Uh, but So you'll draw seven of these and you'll lay the dice out and you'll get started. And let me show you how that works. So here you can see a setup for Quarriers, and what we're looking at here is the three basic cards that are going to be in every game. Uh, you can see there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven creatures with the black uh, backgrounds here, and then there's three spells down at the bottom. And all of these dice are going to be dice available for purchase throughout the game. Uh, costs li listed in the upper left-hand corner. So for example, this card here, which may be difficult to see, but if I bring it up, you can see it costs six. So. On your turn, you're going to take your dot or your bag of dice, you're going to shake it up, and you're going to pull out six dice. So, let's see here, we have five, let's grab one more. We have six dice, and I'm going to take these dice, I'm going to roll them, uh, and we're going to see what I get. So, uh, we can see here that this die, which is one of the basic quiddity dice, came up with a two. Uh, my other ones just came up with a one. Uh, and then I rolled two of these little pawns, which are my basic creatures, so, um, and finally a reroll. And this reroll is going to let me reroll any one die. So uh, since I got two creatures, I'm not too keen on uh, maybe you know having two creatures. I might want just one at the beginning of the game. I'm going to take this die and one of my creatures, and I'm going to reroll them. So now I actually got more rerolls. But let's say I had rerolled you know uh, two quiddity. So I, I now have two more basic quiddity, giving me a total of six for the turn and one creature that I can cast. So, the first thing you're going to do is use your quiddity to bring creatures into play. So I could use one of my quiddity, and I could set it aside, and now I can bring this guy into play. And what he's going to do, he costs one, as denoted in the top left-hand corner, uh, and he's going to come into play, and he's going to deal one damage to everybody else around the table. So if, when I bring him in, I, I tell the person to my left that I'm attacking with one damage, and they're going to have to block that with creatures. Uh, and so their creatures in the bottom right-hand corner are going to have a defense. Uh, and if your attack total uh, of all of your creatures is greater than their defense, you're going to start destroying things. And they're going to have to block damage, and, and it'll destroy their creatures. Uh, and that's, that's kind of the whole point, is that throughout the game, you're trying to get creatures to survive until your next turn. So you're bringing them out with the hopes that you can keep them alive. Now, with the rest of my money or with the rest of my quiddity, I guess, uh, I still have five left, so I can now buy a, a card. And so I look at what costs five, and there's a couple cards here for options that cost five. Let's say I want to take this blue die, uh, which, you know, kind of cool looking dice, but I would take that die, and everything I've used this turn except for the creature that I cast would be put into my discard pile. And that's basically a turn. So now the rest of the players are going to go around, and let's say my creature survives all the way until the next turn. So. What you do is you look at what their glory value is, and you can check that by looking on the card. So if we look at the card for the assistant here, we see that if he survives, you get one glory. So now, as my creature survived, I'm going to score one glory, and I'm going to throw that die into my discard pile. I would then draw six more dice on my turn, roll them, and continue on. Uh, the game would end when one player manages to get all the way to the predetermined amount of victory points for four players 12, three players 15, or four players 20. So that's Quarriers, and really, I was kind of surprised that I liked this game. Now, I'm usually not a very, very big fan of dice. As a matter of fact, uh, dice tend to hate me in games, and uh, you'll see oftentimes in my reviews I comment that I, uh, I don't necessarily dislike a game because of the dice, but um, it makes it harder for me to play because for some reason I just roll terribly. Now I'm sure it averages out over time, but you know. Anyhow, uh, that aside, Quarriers really actually caught me because of the variability of how things work. So each die actually has several different options. 
Uh, so when you're drawing those cards, you can have a different monster each time, even though you're using the same dice. On top of that, with the six different sides on the dice, you have that nice variability added in for rolling. So really, uh, even though everything's incredibly random, it's so interesting and so cool to see uh, what might come up on your dice that it really kind of balances that randomness out for me and makes it a really cool, fun, interesting game. So uh, if you're big into dice, you're going to love this. If you're big into deck builders, I think you'll like it. Uh, if you're just looking for something cool, Quarriers definitely fits that. This game is going to be big. I anticipate it's going to be one of the big sellers of Gen Con 2011. So if you have a chance, pick it up there. If not, pre-order it. Great game. Thanks for joining us today. For more written, audio, and video reviews, as well as the number one board game podcast, check out the website at www.thedicetower.com. Until then, this is Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. Ding.